How's it going, everyone? My name is Dave, and welcome to another episode of Talking About the Four Stages... Stages? No, Four Pillars of Education. So, today we're going to be talking about the pillar to do, which is a good follow-up to the first one, last episode. Um, <clears throat> so, after we, you educate yourself in things... Generally, it is known that you usually have to act on it to support what you're planning. That's the to-do part. Now, the do the doing is very, very well known. A lot of phrases go off of the idea of it as well. Except they probably beat it to the punchline a lot of the time. Like, the knowledge itself is kind of speaking and hearing and learning mentally. But to act on that knowledge is where the to-do comes in. The, do, the to-do is where you really start showing whether you accept this kind of thing or not. Bear in mind, this is not the definition or anything like that. This is just from a psychological standpoint. And with that being said, when you act upon the things you've learned you're really starting to turn the wheels up. Turn the wheels, not churn. Uh, you're starting to turn the wheels on what you've learned and how you want to apply them. It'll affect the future two pillars at a later, at a later date, or it could in the moment. Depends on what you're acting upon. For example, mathematics. It's one of those many, many, many topics in school where you learn it and later on down the line your brain goes, that was a useless topic. But it really isn't. I mean, there's some uh, mathematical equations that, dependent on you and what you do in the future, can be useless. But there are many, a lot of them, that will actually prove very, very helpful especially when it comes to your finances as an adult. A lot of those mathematical circumstances can actually help you organize. This is a perfect example on the to-do part, though. If you want to show the knowledge, if you accept that knowledge for what it is and you want to apply it, bank accounts. End of story. You already have to do a lot of math to organize that, what you have in there. Um, your jobs what you earn from that you can actually put into consideration long before you actually gain the check it's something i do a lot of the time this is a prime example of to do this is under that category though say i don't know you have a job that doesn't require math at all and you have no you really don't need to worry about like running out of finances anytime soon all right then then let's go down the path of, let me think, what's some, sports. I do not personally like this, but I know a lot of people do. And there are a lot of individuals out there who actually want involvement in sports to a degree. As a job, in one way or the other. Well, your knowledge on that kind of stuff has to be pretty dang high for that to work. How the game works. How to explain the details of each little tiny piece of the game in understanding of it. And then when you learn all that, you have to actually act on it consistently. That's the to-do part. So you want to become a, if you're in America, soccer. If you're outside of, if you're outside of the United States, football. Now I'm going to call it football just because that's what everyone else would prefer it. Um, but... To, when you learn the details of that sport, you also have to act on working on being able to actually play the sport. And it's a rough one. It is a very, very, very rough one. So, what do you do about it? Well, simple. You learn each different move. Now, it's simple in word, but in action, obviously not. But you learn everything. You learn every corner, kind of corner every rule. And you abide by as many of them as you can. All of them if possible, because then you're more likely to win the game. 
But nobody likes playing fair, so, you know. And this is obviously an over-exaggeration. That's obviously not entirely true. That being said, if you are to practice time and time again this particular sport, you're on your way to being putting yourself in the field maybe as a career. But once you hit that part, you've hit a completely different pillar. Up until that point, you're pretty much constantly in the act of doing the pillar to do. No, um, learning to do. And you're going to be constantly there until you hit that end goal. And it will benefit in the future. That being said, this pillar I... We, I personally think it's probably the easier ones to approach once you've actually started because learning to know doesn't take very much effort. All you have to do is sit down, listen to lectures, keep notes, even not keeping notes, just learning. Learning on its own, depending on how you learn, just doing that. To do is a bit more complicated because not only do you have to bear in mind everything you learned prior, you also have to act on it simultaneously and constantly do so and keep in mind everything you learned as you act and then everything that's wrong during the action, when you learn it's wrong, you have to keep that in mind and act on that later down the line. It's a much more complicated pillar, but not as complicated as the one we will be talking about next time. But for right now, I am going to leave this here. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the Four Pillars of Education. If you liked it, make sure to give the video a like. And if you really like this kind of stuff, why not consider subscribing to the channel? We've done multiple playlists of multiple different types of psychological or I guess you could say educational topics at this point. Um, if you want to check out the rest of this particular playlist, click the link on this side of my head where you'll find that there. Um, or it, this doesn't pique your interest, but you stuck around for long enough. First of all, thank you. But second of all, why not click the link on the other side where YouTube will give you a video that you may enjoy a bit more. In the meantime, though, I'm going to head off. Thanks again for tuning into this video, guys, and we hope to see all of you in another one. See you guys later.